I'm, I am yet to be driven by a blind man, but you're doing good, Mike. It's well, don't tell further. everybody I'm don't. really not blind. Oh, yeah, they're not going to believe that. All right. Good job. Park. All right, don't tell yeah. anybody I did this. <laughs> and for damn sure, don't try this at home. Let me shut this off. Yeah. Hey, uh, well, uh, I just picked up George. They got lost, so I went and uh, rescued them, and they let me drive back. <laughs> Hey, what are friends for? Oh, yeah. Hey. yeah and, got, uh, oh, yeah. Don't forget. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got to be properly refreshed here. <laughs> Again, don't try this at home, all right? Especially in Florida, boy. They don't mess around with that stuff. But uh, uh, welcome to Barland Hops. <laughs> Where are you at, George? I'm over here, man. Hey, here, hold this. Uh, okay, yeah. Hey, thanks for the ride. I got to put my glasses on here. <laughs> I hope everybody understands what we actually just did. Well, Mike actually did drive in here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. pretty cool. All right. Hey, we got a lot going on today, so uh, we just thought we'd have a little bit of fun and uh, introduce <laughs> ourselves again. Yeah. It's sort yeah. of like the link up of old friends, you know? Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I'm glad George and his son Stuart made it down here, and uh, we got something cooking on inside, and we're going to go in there and show you what we got going. Let's go do it. Yeah, man. Right? Yeah, we can do all this attitude. Mike. <laughs> we are here, my friend, Cape Coral, Florida, and we're down here for a day of distilling. Are you telling me I'm in Cape Coral? Oh, my uh, God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're all set up. If you would, explain something. Explain it to us real quick. Uh, so, inquire, because inquiring minds want to know, what have you got going? Well, first of all, this is my still. The last time George was here, it was set up in reflux mode. And I had the four sight glasses on top of the uh, um, boiler. I've got an eight gallon boiler. It's sitting on a 1800 watt hot plate. I only kick that on along with the 2000 watt intake element at fire up. And once we get close to run temperature, I shut off the hot yeah. plate. So Let's, the PID. We're going to check the temperatures. It's time to turn off the hot plate. Okay. All right. Hey, good call. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Keep going. It's starting to produce now, too. Oh, by the way. Mike. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, good thing I got uh, somebody yeah. cited here. Now, if you would, I, I don't want to interrupt. Uh, yeah, I do want to interrupt you because I want to try to. I'm focused on that sight glass you've got in the center of that column. Please help. Explain. Okay. Well, the sight glass. First of all, we're in pot still mode. I've got Your two. A little bit there. There you go. Yeah. All right. I've got two, one foot sections of two inch, uh, column, and in the middle, I've got a sight glass. At the bottom of the sight glass. I have a silicone gasket with a built-in screen. Oh. And inside the sight glass, we've got uh, uh, dried peppermint leaves. And we mix that with, uh, now this is a secret, don't tell anybody, <laughs> but I, I use rocks. Now these oh. are special rocks because they come from a land far, far away in a not so distant time zone and they're very special. And uh, uh, if you want more information on these rocks, I sell them. You can go through George. <laughs> Actually, they come from our local dollar store. And I've got grated sweetened coconut in here. And we mixed in some marbles and some of these very clean uh, rocks. All right, they're, po they're yeah, smooth. Yeah, what we wanted to do is we wanted to make sure we had that separation yeah, so that, because yeah. you know, when you get something, a fine particle in a column, what it tends to do is it tends to clump together and cause what? A restriction yeah, yeah. and to avoid that you, you know we threw some rocks and some marbles so to create some spacing and that just kind of keeps them away from you keep the keep the vapor going up going through and it, yeah. through it and but I do have a blow-off valve plus these temperature probes these are wireless barbecue temperature probes they're just uh, 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 o-ring compression mm -hmm. so if there's a problem it's going to blow off one of these three things all right I, 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 I put in redundancy but today what we're making now, uh, after goes through the sight glass, comes up into this column, up and over into a gin basket here. And in the gin basket, we've got, uh, ooh, hey, we're That's getting hot. up the tent. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a problem when you're a blind distiller. Um, anyway, we've got uh, a grated uh, sweetened coconut, all right? And, and the, same, the same procedure, the same process is you, you have rocks and marbles in there to keep them separated yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. yeah, in the actual basket in there. And then, of course, uh, uh, going out to a typical shotgun condenser. Um, now, speaking of condensers, you know, they're called a million different things. And I've heard uh, people talk uh, pre-condenser, uh, 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 a deflagmator, yeah. etc. 
There you go, you got it. Yeah. Ooh. Tried doing that with your eyes closed. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Um, and you've heard this is called a four tube condenser. All right. It's a deflagmator. They all do the same thing. They pre-condense. Now, in a reflux still, it would go right here between the top sight glass, if you had four sight glasses, and the elbow going into the gin basket. Water in, water out. Okay? Four. The vapor goes through these four tubes. This is a water jacket. It pre-cools, and the droplets, it recondenses and drops back down. Man. Hit your copper bubble plates. It yep. cycles. So only your highest proof, pure alcohol, makes it through. That's when you're making a gin or a vodka, great, neutral spirit. Great explanation. All right, let me set yeah. this down. But yeah. today, what we actually have in the boiler is a uh, chocolate fermentation. Mm. And it took me a while. I was going through my notes. I started fermenting last November 14th. Um, we got about a 13% ABV. Chocolate is hard to ferment. Let me tell you that right uh, now. Yeah, but challenges a bunch of challenges, huh? But hey, uh, this this is a wide open hobby. It's like being a chef, and yeah. whatever you can think of, try it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but what's really interesting now? He's got he included some. Um, was it Yuhu? Yeah. Cho yeah. yeah, chocolate Yuhu. Chocolate Yuhu. Uh, we've got you have in in the fermentation. You had chocolate nibs, right? Yeah, I used chocolate nibs, I tried chocolate nibs, I tried ground cocoa, I tried various types of, you know, cacao beans, yeah. it was a pain. And what I found the best way to do it was do a sugar wash after it's fermented, then infuse the chocolate nibs oh, or cacao okay. beans and filter that out. Because you got to watch with chocolate because it will separate. Why does he you think your chocolate milk it says shake well? You know? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, kind of yeah. makes sense. Yeah. But uh, so we, we, I've got about five gallons of that chocolate infused sugar wash uh -huh. in the boiler. And then I also put in a bottle of cream de cacao. I cheated, right? A 750 of that. And um, I had, a, I don't know, maybe a couple of pints of vodka laying around. I dumped yeah. that in there just to bump the AVB. And uh, tell them how to taste it, George. What's that? Tell them how it tasted. I'll tell you what, it, it first started running here about 20 minutes ago. And right, right now we're in the midst of a temperature adjustment, but I reached over and grabbed a finger full of it. I was like, then I had to turn around and say, Mike, you got to taste that. But the, the, um, the peppermint was the first thing that you get, you mm -hmm. know, when you hit, mm -hmm. when you, when it hits your lips and your tongue, the tip yeah, of your yeah, tongue. Yeah. And then even Mike said, Mike says, well, well where's the chocolate? And he, and he goes like, oh, well, no, there it is. Yeah. So it's sort of like a delayed reaction. The yeah, chocolate yeah, came yeah, through yeah, with yeah, the two. Yeah, yeah. So I was, I'm really impressed with it. I, I mean, I never was skeptical, but you know, of course you always wonder when you put all that stuff together, you oh, get yeah. the Frankenstein brew. You, you always wonder what's it really going to be like on the other end. Now you've got a data point. You'll know oh, yeah. in the yeah, future yeah. if you ever want to make that again, but we got to get this thing up and running. So. We're going to take a break here from you, and we, we've got to do some adjustment on temperatures. We've got the PID running. Yep, we got the proof and trail hydrometer. Yeah, it's saying 199 proof because it's not measuring anything yet. The yeah, we're not filling hydrometer up. Hydrometer's all the way down. Yeah, yeah. So let me turn that back off. But uh, yeah, gosh, Mike, I'm just glad to be here, man. Oh, yeah, I'm glad you guys this morning. Oh yeah, we'll have to tell them that story when we come back. Right. <laughs> you All know right. this. You know what's coming. Um, Wait a minute. That's yeah, I know that song. I'm fermenting, that? and uh, uh, George, you've taught me a lot. I never knew you could ferment at high temperatures like that. That yeah. last video you did on that, yeah. Yeah, amazing. You, you actually can, um, but there's always that. There's always that danger of stressing out the yeast. Yeah. You know, you can. Now, we talked to Nate uh, the other day, and um, he uses 68 as his fermenting temperature. And oh. is, he, he'll, he does his beer, his wine, his yeah. mash, all at the same temperature. Um, and he finds for his environment, because environment plays a, a, a huge role in any part of this process, yeah. uh, he finds that 68 is his, his sweet spot. So, But you find here that 78 is your sweet spot. And, see, and in Texas, I'm anywhere between 74 and 78, and it all depends on the reaction of my fermentation. Yeah. I kind of track it for a couple of days, and then I just let leave it alone. 
once, once I find my sweet spot. But it's usually in between the 74, 78 range, something like that. And I, I'll tell you, you, you will learn to respect yeast. They, they are a living organism, okay? <laughs> They're about as finicky as women are, okay? <laughs> All right, yeah. the yeasties be finicky. All right, yeah. and so, but you do have to respect them, and you got to learn how to work with them because th they're going to do what they want to do, yeah. not what you want to do necessarily. Yeah. And you can learn to play with it and find sweet spots for this, this, that, and that. And it depends on what you're fermenting, what your goal is. And George taught me, Mike, quit shooting for big ass ABVs, man. Knock up this 18 percent. Yeah. So I'm running 13. What we got in the boiler now, that's 13 percent. Easy peasy. It's a lot more manageable, and it's manageable. It's more manageable to ferment, and it's a whole lot more manageable to distill. Well, and and no off flavors. Right. No off flavors. You right. keep your yeast happy. You if you stress them, you're going to build off flavors. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's a there's and it's it's not really a fine line. There's a definite line between. Mm -hmm. Your yeast being happy, your yeast being overly happy, crazy, mm -hmm. or struggling yeah. and trying to survive. Yeah. And then they become cannibalistic. Um, a lot of things take place, but you're right, you've got to respect yeast. They're living organisms and they're going to do, you're right, yeah. what they're going to do. You just need to find that, that happy sweet spot. Yeah. With, uh, Keep I them never, happy. I never thought we were going to get this deep into the topic of just yeast itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is fascinating. I th this whole hobby fascinates the hell out of me and that's why I enjoy it and I, 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 I found a way to do it without sight. Yeah. Well, let's listen a little bit more to that George Tucker playing. Yeah. Oh, okay, nice. He's, nice. Got, he's got some other music on here. Hey, we shall return, but we've got a lot going on today. Happy to still it. Happy to still it. But we ain't done yet. That's right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Mike, it looks like uh, it, We've got, I can just tell you that you've got almost three quarters, you've got two and almost three quarters of a quart here of, and when we pulled the last, the last one off, we stopped collecting at 120 proof. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that was a pretty, that was a pretty bodacious run. Well, and this is just a lesson here, um, where we, we stopped at 120 proof and we were borderline tails. Yeah. And we we're just starting to, just starting. So don't just think you can run down to 100. You can run down to 80. Pay attention to your cuts. Taste. Yeah. Taste, Taste and smell, feel. feel. And test it and smell it. Yeah. yeah. As a matter of fact, we were at like 201 degrees. So it that's was... That's an indication. That's right another too. indication. Yeah, we were yeah, at, yeah. That, at that... In my opinion, it's the borderline between a heart and a tail. Yeah. yeah. Um, where if you're using enough energy, you're going to force the tails out. And that's what you don't want to do, mm -hmm. force tails out. So That's why low and slow. Low yeah. and slow has yeah. always been. Now, is, is there more alcohol left in there? Yeah, there probably is yeah. probably 3% alcohol by yeah. volume. But I don't know. In my opinion, I don't know how you feel. But to try to draw that out of there for, no, no, you know, I got no. better things to do. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, time is the essence. Uh, yeah. Now, if I was making a rum or something like that, I would take what's left in that boiler after everything cools down for a dunder. Yeah. All right? And you can get pretty crazy with rums. Uh, it it all depends on what you want. Yeah. It's all it's your game. It's nobody else's. Just be knowledgeable and respect the uh, the the procedures, the technique, and work from there. There you go. You know. There you go. Man. That really yeah. makes a whole lot of sense. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, we really good collection. Really good. Right. Mike, that brings our distilling day to an end. And, George, uh, as always, yep. it's always a pleasure when you come out here. I'll tell and, you what, uh, man, it's, it's been fun. I want to say, hey, Rachel Stewart, say hi to everybody, please. Yeah. Come on. Oh gosh, guys, you've, been, right. you've been instrumental today in, in helping us yeah. get through all of this, and we appreciate all your hard work too. Yeah. So are you ready, pass. Mike? I'm ready, guys. How do we always finish videos. I know. You tell me. Yeah, you know. We always one. Two, three. Happy, Happy distilling. distilling.